Okay, got my new Hacko FR300 desoldering tool from uh, Hacko Direct yesterday. Um, I ordered it through T-Equip and they included this uh, nice pair of di Italian diagonal side cutters, CHP-170s. I'm guessing that's a Hacko promotion because it all shipped direct from Hacko. When I did order from T-Equip, I used the EEV blog uh, discount code that they have set up uh, for an additional, I think it was 6% off of... Uh, the best price I could get on this right now and I ordered it as soon as it was available online last week to order and I got it in I pretty quick got it in yesterday so it shipped on Monday I think and and came in within a uh, you know few days from California so I'm happy about that first thing I noticed is the case is a little bit thinner than the 808 case um, the gun is, is supposed to be trimmer They've reduced it down to one diaphragm from two diaphragm from the old 808. The 808 has been a mate and stay on my bench for a, for a few years, and I really uh, enjoyed using this gun over previous desoldering guns that I had, even a couple other larger uh, Hackle compressor-driven uh, units. Uh, this one was uh, very low maintenance, uh, took very little room up on the bench, and, and worked fine, but it did have some shortcomings. So uh, a lot of those shortcomings... Uh, are supposedly overcome in this with the new FR300. So I'm looking forward to uh, uh, doing a little bit more thorough test of this uh, shortly. Uh, first thing I noticed is a little addendum here that's to the instructions. Uh, so the, it looks like this sleeve that, that is shipping in over the over the iron itself is some kind of protective cover to prevent risk of a burn and melting uh, the carrying case. Okay. Well, that's a good idea if you're storing it in the carrying case, particularly if you're traveling around with this thing after using it, um, because these things get very hot and stay hot for uh, for a while. Uh, but the problem with this thing is it's only, the way I see it, going to be useful in the case, because there's no way this thing is going to stay attached to this on your bench uh, or any place else. The 808 came with this nice little cloth cover that, uh, had a a velcro retention that would wrap around it here to hold it in place that's a good idea now why they couldn't do something like that I don't know maybe because they felt that this area of the gun on the FR 300 is eliminated so they couldn't just use the same um, cloth cover but Come on, guys. You could have done something. Even I, right on first impressions, can think of something that they could have done. Uh, they could have taken a, a piece of Velcro and run it right around the handle here and hold that right in place like that. Come on. That would have been a real easy fix uh, for that and, and a nice solution. And, and instead of this add-on piece, piece of junk, we're going to get rid of right away. Um, next thing I notice here is this piece of metal. Uh, looks like a some kind of a stand. Uh, I don't know how you would use that. Um, let's see here on the packing list. It says that it is an iron, indeed an iron holder. In parentheses, simple type. Yep. Uh, another piece of useless piece of scrap metal, as far as I'm concerned. Um, maybe somebody else would get a better idea how to use that. I'm not even waste my time. Uh, comes with the tip re, tip cleaning tool. The uh, element cleaning tool like the 808 did it comes with uh, some of the cloth ceramic cloth filters I think the 808 came with four of them this comes with two of them uh, boy uh, they they last for a while though and and on the 808 I would just peel a couple of little layers when they got dirty um, and so they last for a long time the 808 also I came I think came with three extra of the uh, aluminum pre filters uh, they're a little bit different design than the 808, so they've redesigned the solder tube, I'm guessing, th on, on this. In fact, I can see that they have from here. Uh, you don't go through many of those, so I don't think that's a big deal either. Taking a look at the, the gun, first impression are is it's very comfortable in the hand, especially compared to the 808. One of the problems that I had with the 808 uh, was after a long period of time uh, it would become pretty uncomfortable to use. Um, the trigger on the 808 is up above the handle here and it means one you had to reach up for it and when you're reaching up for it 
your your finger is constantly hitting this hard edge right here. This would get hot in here, your finger constantly hitting that. And if you're doing this for a couple of hours, it gets uncomfortable. Um, so I, I like the redesign of this handle, much nicer feel to the hand, much more comfortable. The gun feels more balanced. It's, it's supposedly a little bit heavier, but it feels lighter in the hand, feels more balanced in the hand than the 808. Uh, another thing I noticed right away is the uh, calibration uh, adjustment and the temperature adjustment on this are a little bit different. The you got a nice thumb wheel and it's got a legend here to show you uh, where it's set uh, temperature wise from 350 degrees centigrade up to uh, up to 500 degrees centigrade of uh, from uh, looks like 660 degrees Fahrenheit to 930 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so I like that. It's explaining to you uh, so that you can see easily what temperature setting. On this one here, uh, the recess crosshatch screw ha has four, you know, it's a crosshatch. So you have no idea really where it's pointing to. If you, if you forget what temperature you had it set at, uh, basically, to figure it out, you know, you could trial and error with it, or as I would do, is I would take a temperature probe to uh, my fluke meter, and I would uh, attach or, or put that on the tip of the gun, and then adjust the temperature that way. I also uh, set it up and calibrated it to uh, uh, that way as well, the temperature setting uh, to where I thought it should be. Here, uh, you know, this makes much more sense, a lot easier to use. Another thing I noticed right away too is that uh, this LED, this is going to be an on and off uh, LED. It's got the new switch, another big gripe I had with this. Uh, you know, especially if you have hard to reach plugs, it's under your bench and behind a bench, behind equipment. Uh, plugging and unplugging this thing all the time uh, could get to be a, a pain in the rear. Uh, this has got a nice reset switch. I guess if you've got big fingers, uh, my thumb will get in there. Uh, my finger is pretty easily, not that big of a deal, but it's, it's comfortable. I don't feel it on the back of my hand. So if you open that switch up anymore, it might be a little bit uncomfortable. Yes, they maybe could have moved the switch to the bottom or someplace different, but I like that. That's nice. Uh, big improvement. Cord's supposed to be a little bit longer than the old one too. So that's, that's nice to have, especially if you've got hard to reach uh, places to plug this thing in. Uh, another thing I noticed right off the bat, uh, the profile of this gun. Uh, much thinner, that's due to obviously the fact that uh, the new gun only has a single diaphragm. The older gun has two diaphragms. I did not like the screw on the back cover of this thing. I noticed that these things get knocked off all the time. I see them listed on eBay or or wherever and, and the screws completely missing or been replaced with something else or it's been broken the little plastic uh, head on the back of this has been and been broken um, the uh, cover on this thing here slides off much easier uh, than the older uh, 808 and you can see the difference right there a single diaphragm that's actually supposed to be more powerful uh, provide a little bit more suction than the uh, 808 I don't think it's uh, much different. Uh, it was adequate, I think, on the 808. So, uh, but the fact that it's you know half the size is is in my eye, uh, you know, is a very nice idea. Uh, makes it makes it for a much more ergonomic look and feel to that gun. Uh, some something I wish they might have done though is put a little retaining washer on the inside of this so that the screw uh, wouldn't get lost and. If you had that on there too, it would it would start to push this cover off. Although it pulls off really easy uh, when you uh, loosen it up. Um, the mechanism for the desolder tube for removing and cleaning the solder out of the desolder tube is much nicer than the 808. It's got a cocking uh, mechanism and a and a release here. So uh, removing, cleaning, reinstalling the desolder tube is much nicer than on the 808. I like that. Nice improvements on this gun. Uh, another nice improvement, instead of having the filter uh, back behind uh, the cartridge into the diaphragm pump area, it's right in here. I, I like this idea better. Um, uh, you're going to be able to see whether or not this filter is, is getting dirty 
uh, back here. Uh, much better design. I really like this. They've really put some thought into that. Um, another improvement that I see here is in the uh, tip retaining mechanism on the 808. Uh, came with a wrench, and you, this uh, re retaining cover here has to unscrew all the way. Now, one of the problems with this type of a mechanism is that uh, the uh, uh, the thermal issues on it causes that will cause this thing to to loosen up, and uh, you constantly have to make sure that this thing is tight. You're getting good contact with the tip. Uh, on this one here, here's the the uh, removal tool, the tip removal tool, it's just a quarter turn and there's a spring tensioner in there so it's always going to keep nice pressure on that tip. I like that. Very, not only is it quicker, easier to change it out, but it's a much better mechanism for keeping the proper tension on that tip. Good job Hacko on that. Uh, overall, I really like this gun. Uh, big thumbs up. Uh, one of the other things I noticed here is it's 140 watts. That was a, another bit of a little bit of a gripe on the uh, 808. Not only did it take a while to ramp up in temperature, um, I think Hackle recommends uh, letting this gun ramp up for you know five or ten minutes or so. Although I, I found that it would ramp up to about 700 degrees in, in under two minutes. Um, it uh, when you moved it from solder joint to solder joint, it would take a few moments, a few seconds uh, for it to ramp back up to temperature so that you could get a, uh, a good uh, desolder on your component. Uh, I'm hoping that this thing will, will not only ramp up quicker but maintain temperature better than the 808 will so you can move through uh, joints, desoldering joints faster with this gun. Uh, it comes with the uh, spring uh, tip cleaner as well as the element a cleaner tool like the old one did. It's got a couple of uh, extra the ceramic paper filters. I think the 808 kit came with four. Uh, this has got two. Uh, it also came I think with three of the aluminum pre-filters. This has got one. Uh, not a big deal. Well, you know they could have uh, they could have easily included that. How would I improve uh, this gun? Well, one. You know, let's, let's let's at least match what we had in the 808 Hacko uh, with four ceramic filters. I, those you go through. The aluminum pre-filters, not a big deal on on those. Um, come on, get a better a better better cover. Uh, this this thing here, this is an afterthought. Let's Hacko, let's let's put one of these covers here with a piece of Velcro back here. Uh, I'm gonna have to work on on making something like that myself, but uh, that would be a nice little uh, addition. Uh, also, some extra tips would be nice. Uh, a couple of extra tips would be nice to include in that. But other than those, I mean, I, I say definitely thumbs up on this. I'm very happy with this gun. A huge, huge improvement over the 808 with the gun itself. Very happy with the gun.